Good evening. Merry Christmas. I hope and pray that your celebrations with your family, especially tomorrow, will just be a joyous time. We come together, and tonight, Christmas Eve, we remember the Christ child and praise God for the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May you be blessed as we worship, as we sing, as we pray, and as we come before him and also receive the Lord's Supper. Would you pray with me? Father, we ask that you would bless this time of worship and holiness to the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Celia, would you please bless us? first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. The second reading is from John first chapter verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We now light the Christ candle, which forever reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world.
On this Christmas Eve night, we pray together as a congregation. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please stand for our call to worship. In the quiet of the night, a woman gives birth, a personal act of faith, accepting God's charge upon her. In the quiet of the night, a husband becomes a father, a personal act of faith, accepting God's charge upon him. In the quiet of the night, a baby breathes the air, a personal act of sacrifice, God steps out of the divine into the mundane for us. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We enter into your house of worship this evening with many things on our hearts. At times, the joy we should feel is marred because we have allowed so many things to occupy our hearts. Father, Father we confess, confess that our joylessness is the result of our allowing the things and busyness of the season to take the place of you. These activities have squeezed the joy out of so many of our thoughts, words, and deeds. We pray for the gift of forgiveness in the name of the Christ child born in Bethlehem. Please take a few moments of silence and bring any personal sin before the Lord.
Father, we thank you for hearing our quiet confession. Hear the good news. The Lord looks upon the penitent heart. In his grace, he forgives and restores his children who were separated by sin. Through the blood of the Lamb, he has made us new. To God be the glory. Let us pray in unison. Eternal God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your one true light. May that light illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds. May the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love represented by the birth in Bethlehem fill our lives and become part of all that we say and do. Amen. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. To God be the glory. Amen. those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that the whole world should be registered. Joseph went with Mary to the city of David called Bethlehem. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. Glory to God in the highest for his wonderful birth. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, and the angel of the Lord said to them, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Glory to God in the highest, who comes to the lowest. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Glory to God in the highest 
who establishes peace on earth. Would you please be seated? And would the children please come up? Come on, kids. Ah. Do we have any other little children? I mean, you could be 90 and be a child. Maybe 90 might push it, right? How old are you? 16, you are. 9, 14, 6. And here comes some more. Well. Have you all ever met Jordan Davis? Oh, he's your daddy. <laughs> well, what's going to happen tomorrow? It is Jesus' birthday, but are you going to get anything? Oh, what you going to get? Presents. Give me five. There you go. But you will get presents. Jack? Know what that is? Rudolph the Rain... Is that Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? If I had mine, it would be Randolph the Red-Tailed Antelope. But I sing that to you. I had a gift tonight. I, my family's in Charlotte. And I got an invitation to come to the Coral Home for a great dinner. That was a nice surprise when I saw all of these great toys. And I said, can I borrow this if I promise to give it back? And now I've given it back. Okay. So what do you hope you'll get tomorrow as a present? Anything. What? A baby. Lisa. <laughs> you know anything about that? Any other gifts? Any special things? Okay. Anybody else? Well, you know what my favorite gift tomorrow is going to be? Time with my family. That'll be really special. Hmm? That's true. Christmas is about Jesus' birthday and love and truth. And that's why we're here tonight, to celebrate the greatest gift of all. What is that called on the table? Do you know kids know? Where, what town did it take place in? Bethlehem. Any of y'all ever been to Bethlehem? Many years ago I was. And it's amazing. The most exciting gift that I received in Bethlehem was to sit, literally sit, in the shepherd's field where the shepherds saw the angels. And it's literally right outside the, the walls of the city. And I sat in a small cave and I broke down and cried because I felt the presence of the Lord. That's what this night is really all about, the presence of the Lord in Jesus. Would you pray with me? Father, we love you and praise you for sending Jesus. May we all rejoice in him, and we just thank you in his holy and magnificent name. Amen. God bless you all, and Merry Christmas. Yes, ma'am. Jesus loves us. He is our friend in everything. You're right. Everything to us. I think you're going to end up being a pastor. Possibly. God bless you, kids. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you for coming up. first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. 
They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the reading. The second lesson is from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. Would you now please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel for this Christmas Eve is recorded in the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house in the lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For unto you is born this day, in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them, but Mary kept all of these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Gracious Father, we thank you for this quiet Christmas Eve night. Thank you for the opportunity to come into the house of the Lord 
and hear the old, old story and the glory of your beloved Son. May the words that I speak bring glory to Jesus, the Bethlehem child. Amen. The week after Thanksgiving, Anne and I did what? What do you think we started to do? This is an interactive sermon. What do we start to do? You got it. We started to decorate. We had a good time. And we, we got the tree up and all that kind of stuff. Got ornaments out. Now, if you were to come to my house and see my tree, you would just be thrilled. At the bottom of the tree, that's where all the children things are. In fact, in 1972, when I did my internship in Austin, Texas, there was a lady there by the name of Carol Laubach. And she showed Anne how to do all kinds of wooden things. And you'll see Santa Claus. And you'll see Mrs. Claus. And Frosty the Snowman. Whole bunch of stuff. But the most important one, and really the funnest one, is Little Angel, that tall. And his little wings like that. And he's got on red pajamas. And a slingshot in the back hip of his pajamas. That would be Little Tommy. That would be me and my oh, devilish part of me. When Carol gave me that back then, or Anne actually showed her, I've loved it ever since. But if you go to the top of the tree, that's when you begin to see all the nativity scenes and all kinds of wonderful things that Anne and I have collected over the last 50, almost three years. And when we got done decorating the tree. You know what I thought? I thought it was the prettiest tree in all the world, or at least the prettiest tree in our house, for sure. But did you know that God has a different way of decorating trees than you and I do? He has a different way. Think about it. How does God decorate a tree? God decorates it by providing the earth, and the soil, and the water, and the sunshine, and placing the food in the earth. Then the tree begins to partake of the blessings that God gave to that tree. And eventually you'll see beautiful leaves and maybe even fruit develop on the, on the limbs. It's a wonderful thing when you see that. But here's the key. God decorates not on the outside like we do. God decorates from the inside. And I want to let you in on the inside story. The Lord began the decorating process many, many years ago, far before time even began. John tells us about it in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and nothing that is made was not made without him. In him was life and light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. All of us have been attuned to light recently, haven't we? Heavenly lights. We remember in Matthew 2, the coming of the wise men and the star of Bethlehem that guided them there. How many of you have been watching the skies? How many of you went out of your home and looked up at the sky? Any this week? Put Raise your hands. Come on. There you go. I got pictures. The Hubble telescope got better pictures. But we were all taken by the light. We all have that in common. And behold the star that they had seen rose and went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child lay. Do you remember that between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament, there's a long period of 400 years, and in that time there's darkness. There's not a lot of light at all, because in that 400-year period of time, 
God did not send a prophet to speak for him. It is called the intertestamental period. And then there appears in the wilderness John the Baptist, who fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah, Matthew 3, verses 1 through 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. The light of the world was born 30 years before John announced his coming. And tonight I read to you about his birth. And in that same region, there were shepherds in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the glory of the Lord shone all around. And the angel told them not to be afraid. So what did these scared, sleepy shepherds do? They leave shepherds' field outside of Bethlehem and go into the little town of Bethlehem and reveal to Mary and Joseph the wonders of what they have experienced. For they found the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Have any of you all ever been to the Biltmore House at Christmas? I'm just kind of curious. Go, boy, then you know, that's beautiful, isn't it? Um, we've been there. Have you ever been to the Daniel Stowe Botanical Gardens at Christmas? I'd never been until about a year ago, but a a member of the church gave us a gift. In fact, it was my goddaughter's mama, Jim McClish, who gave us those tickets. And we went there and we saw all the beautiful lights. And Anne and I were just simply talking about that experience. Plus, the Christmas before that, we had been to Biltmore. And then I looked at my wife and I said, you know, as beautiful as all of this is, I bet it doesn't even come close to comparing to the light of what is shining in heaven right now. And I believe that's true. But listen what happened that glorious night. The glory of the Lord shone all around them. And they were fearful. And the Lord said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. Announced by angels and light beyond anything we can imagine, the king of the universe had arrived in Bethlehem. But there's another side of this majestic story that should touch our hearts, and it should touch us in a wonderful and tender way. All of you know he didn't look much like a king, did he? His face was probably pretty wrinkled probably kind of red, and his lungs, they were strong and healthy, but they were still the cries of a newborn baby, and his very existence depended entirely on Mary being able to feed that child. Majesty in the midst of the mundane, holiness in the filth of sheep manure and sweat, Divinity entering the world on the floor of a stable through the womb of a teenager in the presence of a carpenter. Mary touched the infant God's face. He had abandoned a golden throne room for a dirty sheep pen and worshiping angels had been replaced by bewildered shepherds. Meanwhile, the city hums, just hums along. They have no idea whatsoever that God has just visited their earth. The people of Bethlehem were unaware that God had visited the planet. Tonight, you come here to Oregon Lutheran Church to celebrate, worship. That little child, and I I don't know her name, where is she? 
Anyway, she, there she is. She knew the story so well as she shared it. We came and come to celebrate the birth of the manger child. I hope you haven't missed him. I really hope you haven't missed him. You know, he wants to meet you. You know that, don't you? He wants to love you in a way that you've never been loved before. He wants you to trust him and his eternal work that he accomplished first in a manger, then on the cross, and then at an empty tomb. Why does he want you and I to know him while we're here on earth? I can tell you why. And a family who's looking at me very intently right now knows maybe better than anyone else at this moment. I don't know. He wants you to know him because this is not your permanent home. This is not your permanent home. He has something much greater planned. I want to share a promise that comes from Jesus himself. Think about it. How many of you said at all, I don't know where the time has gone. Have you all said that? Well, of course you have. You know, my grandson is four, but it won't be any time at all. It'll be 24, will it? My other grandson's eight. He'll be 28 before I know what's going. I'll probably be with Jesus. I doubt that I'll see that. There's not a, long, a lot of longevity in the Corbell side. There is in the inside, but not mine. But you know what? All of us are closer to being home. You may not have noticed it, but you're closer to home right now than you have ever been before. Each moment is a step taken. Each breath is a page turned. Each day is a mile marked, a mountain climbed, and you're closer than you ever have been before. And before you know it, or I know it, our appointed time will come. And if we know the Lord, we'll step down into a city. And do you know what you're going to hear? You're going to hear voices, and you'll recognize the voices. You will see people, and you will know them. And they will call you by name. And they will welcome you home. And maybe, maybe in the back of the crowd, the one who'd rather die than live without you will take his nail-pierced hands from his heavenly robes and walk up and embrace you. That is my prayer for every single one of you. Lord Jesus, we praise you. You have prepared that beautiful home. We thank you that you went to a manger. You went to a cross. You rose from a tomb. And you will come back in glory. In Jesus' name, I offer this time and prayer. Amen and amen.
Now let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again and in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our gracious Father, as the Christ candle was lit tonight and we saw that beautiful flame come up, help it always to remind us that even when our world feels so dark, that your light still shines. Help us to look for that in the lives of people, in the ways that you interact and touch us. In a few moments, we will receive the Lord's Supper. We thank you that you come to us in bread and wine, in promise and in truth, offering us yourself the forgiveness of our sins and the renewal of our spirits. Send us forth this night renewed by your grace. Father, we pray for those who are suffering. Foster, Gail Foster in particular, Lord, I lift her up to you as she is still at Presbyterian Hospital. And I thank you that she is so much stronger than she was. But we pray for those, especially those who are suffering with COVID-19 and those who are suffering in many other ways. In these moments of silence or on our lips, may we now bring others before the throne of grace. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. Bless the gifts we offer this day, and let them be a blessing for others. In the name of Emmanuel, God with us, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heads. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, in the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of the angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we will praise and sing your glory now and forevermore. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. After he had given thanks, he broke it, 
And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, and having given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Would you please be seated? Each of you, when you came in tonight, received a cup. For some of you, this is quite different. If you will turn the cup upside down and peel back the tab, which will reveal the, the bread, please take the bread out. The body of the Lord was given and broken for you. Please. Would you now turn it over and remove the tab? The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve each one of you unto eternal life. Amen. We now come to the candle lighting ceremony. Each of you received a candle when you came in. If you would be kind enough to simply turn the light. if the ushers would lower the lights as we sing Silent Night. Oh, 
so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, oh, holy night, shepherds pray at the side, glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly hosts sing Alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, oh, holy night. Son of God, was pure love, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at the grave, Jesus, Lord, at the grave. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.